afternoon. Welcome to the Washington Independent School District meeting for October. Let's start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one, approval of the minutes. Uh, we have one set of minutes from last month's meeting in your packet. Is there are no questions. I'll make a motion for approval of the minutes. We have a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second. Third. Can hear me. We have a second. We have a virtual board member here, so Dr. Blackman. Uh, so we have first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> one one. Okay. Uh, motion carries uh, item two. Approval of the minutes of the special call hearing. Uh, that was the tax meeting. Uh, any questions on that or addition? Looking for a motion for that? So moved. I have one motion. Can I have a second? I can second it. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Item three, confirmation and approval of claims. Ms. Rogers. Hello there, everyone. So our total claims for this period is $2,785,261.22. Of that amount, uh, fund one is approximately $350,000, and that is approximately $76,000 more than it was last year. And there's several reasons for that. You all are familiar that each month uh, we have a few reasons at least, our utilities, our fuel, and then Fifth Third Bank uh, because we didn't have as much activity last year at this time. And so those three combined are $33,522. In addition to that, there's a tax <coughs> refund included in that for approximately $27,000 and that is for a nursing home that's in our uh, local taxing district. They filed an appeal. And so they actually won their appeal and their tax bill was reduced by $3.5 million. So that's a refund that we owed them for last year's payment. And then also you'll see that there's um, a payment made to XBS, which is our um, copier um, network program. And we paid them for School Gate Guardian, which you all may be familiar with or heard before. That's where visitors to our school, we will actually take their license, scan it in, create a badge for them you know, to use while they're on our campus. And then also it does a, a background check on sexual offenders. Um, so that is one thing that we've added um, to all of our schools for our visitors. Fund 360, our construction account, we had payments that were issued for approximately $2.1 million in this period. We have spent 43% of the project cost um, for this. We also had debt service payments for interest on one bond series. That was $10,880. All right. Any questions? Motion for approval of funds. I'll make a motion. You have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Item four is the financial report, also from the truck. So the treasurer's report before you today, uh, you've received a balance sheet, a monthly um, financial report, as well as um, the breakdown of the verified cash balance, which is $14,279,921.04 for this period, September ending. I have a few things that I want to make you aware of today. Um, the first is the tax collection status. So we initiated that two weeks ago. We're two weeks in. We have uh, received approximately 21% of the bills that were issued. That's $1.6 million to date, and that's very consistent with what it was last year. Um, so we issued 6,216 bills, which is actually 46 more bills than last year, just to make you aware. And then also, this is the first year that we've accepted credit cards, and we've had 12 payments online so far, which is actually pretty good, 1% um, of the bills that we've received. And you all are aware that's just um, a service that we're offering um, the property owners, and there's no cost to the district for that service. 
Another item I wanted to make you aware of is that um, there was a, an administrative review statewide in the food service program. And because of that, we are required to increase the prices uh, for the adult meals. So the breakfast price will increase to $2.73, and the lunch price increases to $4.58. That's the minimum for both of those. If we fail to comply by November 1st, then we were going to be required to pay that out of another source, which would be general fund. Um, so we are going to um, see these price increases begin November 1st. They wanted us to initiate as soon as possible. It had to be done by December 17th. So I spoke with Greta Samuels, our food service director, and we agreed November 1st. She's going to send an email to all staff tomorrow to make them aware of this change. But she estimated that it's approximately 30 to 40 employees, staff, that actually purchase the breakfast, or breakfast and lunches combined. Um, just to, so you would be aware of who that's going to affect this change. How much of an increase was it? I mean, so it was a 38 cent increase for breakfast and a dollar and eight cents for lunch. Okay. Is that a pre-tax number, or is that? I mean, so you go in there. Is that an odd number like that, or is it? Yeah, they have tax for that. No, they actually pay cash, or they can put it on an account um, for them. Um, so it's not included in their payroll if that's what you're asking. No, I'm just asking that price was an uneven number. Is that, is that a number before tax, so it, it rounds up to $5? We don't collect tax, so. Okay, yeah. all right, so, gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the last thing is, back in May, we provide funding um, for site-based monies to the schools based on a projection for the enrollment. And then on the 40th day of school, we, actually, we take the actual enrollment and um, sometimes we'll make an adjustment for them. The high school is the only school that saw an adjustment this year because they had an increase, a net gain of 54 students. So we are actually going to add $5,400 to their budget. And they are at present um, going to present that to their site base, make the decision how to budget that, and you'll find that updated in the budget for next month. <coughs> and that's all that I have, unless you all have any questions. Any questions? All right, thank you. Great, thank you all. And item five is the superintendent's report. Yeah, so I uh, have some um, great news to share with you. Um, we, we, I, I know the board is already very aware of the talented and committed staff we have that serve kids uh, in our district. Um, and I, I'd like to, this, this announcement about one of our teachers, I will contend is justification or for, would be acknowledgement of those highly skilled folks that we have employed. Um, Jennifer Hagen um, is taking on a um, opportunity to work through the Kentucky Department of Education as a early learning specialist. Um, quite an accomplishment for her. I know she, she, there was a press release that I think we put out not too long ago uh, talking about this and, and she gives a lot of accolades to this district and the opportunities that she's had in leadership. Um, and I know that Ms. Sharp, uh, principal at the Early Childhood Center, she's really uh, leaned on Jenny many, many times to, uh, to bolster opportunities for kids, especially in the area of technology. Um, and I don't think Jenny is here. I didn't see her, uh, but but Miss Sharp is. I don't know if you would want to say any uh, any make any comments about Jenny and this opportunity that she has. Um, just that I agree. This is a, an amazing opportunity for Jenny, and I do think it's to the caliber of teachers at not only early childhood but our entire district. Uh, when I read the job description for this, it just spoke Jenny Hagen to me, and I went to her and said, "Have you?" Have you seen this? Because I think it may be you. Um, and um, so I'm super, super proud of her. I know she's going to do a great job. So she's kind of on loan to the Department of Ed through uh, up to two and a half years, uh, basically. So she may be back with us at some point, or they may just snatch her up permanently, <laughs> which is kind of what I think. Uh, I would hope she could be here with us today, but they, yesterday was her first day. And they already have her working today. So I spoke with her this morning and she said, I just don't think I can make it. But I am very excited for her. Um, and she'll do a great job and represent our district well, I know. 
do you have, she'll get to, she'll be working with other uh, centers or teachers specifically yes, actually you know? across the state preschool through second grade so lots of good opportunities for her and um, she's you know just right in our back door so anytime we need her I know we'll have access to her as well so great opportunity for our school as well to have somebody on the inside helping us out for sure mm -hmm. thank you so uh, this is a short report but that concludes the superintendent report today. wow yes yeah I, there's other things that were going to be in the report that i just put on the agenda so okay. <laughs> put all, so we just stuck it on the agenda so um, but that's all i have for my part thank you thank you okay mm -hmm. item six looks like we have some today recognition of visitors i have four on the list if there are more than four they'll need to uh, put their name on the list and their address so who'd like to speak first i have Candy Messerani. Yes. Okay. Welcome. How are you all? Good. Good. Um, I'm not going to come armed with internet knowledge like the standard likes to say, loud parent with internet knowledge. But I am going to ask about the American Rescue Plan. Uh, congratulations for receiving your part of the six hundred and eleven million dollars that Kentucky got awarded for uh, federal funds. I've been a federal employee for over twenty years. So I kind of was interested on the regulations that go into, I know federal government puts tons of regulations on it. So I did a little bit of research and on the regulations that was published on 22 April on page 76 has the requirements, which I thought, thought were really interesting. Vaccina vaccination sites in the schools was one of them, which I know we already have contact tracing, which already, you know, we have, and mask. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, those three items were the items that were required to get the funds, right? Correct? I'm, I'm actually not sure that the mask was a requirement. Um, it, it was in the federal regulations. Yeah, I'm not aware. And also the Kentucky Board of Education sent out 10 documents that were redacted from public view, which also have additional requirements. Okay. So today we are actually going to follow a Freedom Information Act request for all emails and correspondence for, for the American Rescue Funds or anything that we, we can actually find out since it's not published anywhere if our kids are being sold. If it's not about safety and if it's not, you know, we know we can present all the facts. So if, if the reason why our kids is having to wear a mask is because of these funds, we would like an honest answer. Tell us yes or no. Because can, right can, now, yeah, I can two, two students yeah. and two employees have COVID. Yeah. Way under the threshold. Uh, I can, I, and with your permission, I, mean, I, can, I can tell you, I wasn't even aware that it was a requirement. It is. Ready. It's actually so, in the So no, that, is not, that okay. has nothing to do with the current mandate in place. Okay. So by you taking those funds, that's not part of the requirement because that's the actual requirement in the funds, the documents from the federal and, government. And I wasn't aware. So yeah, aware. We, we just want some more information. So we are submitting a federal uh, information act for all you guys, for all correspondents from the Kentucky School Board to find out, you know, how long our kids are going to be in these masks? And is the vaccinations going to be next? Is that part of the requirements that were redacted from public view? Or are teachers going to start getting fired if they don't start getting vaccinated? There's been no requirements okay. that I've been made aware of. Okay. So, yeah, we, we just want to know. We just want transparency. And so, I mean, if I'm wrong, you can tell me. But that, that's actually in the federal documents. Like I said, I've done this for over 20 years. And I know the federal government puts a lot of things in there. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Kim Wright. Sorry, I didn't ask Miss Miss Ronnie to do it, but could you state your address, please? 2032 Clear Creek Drive. Thank you. Um, apparently, our local press thinks any disagreement over school board policies is misinformation from loud parents. Ironically, they don't think parents should research issues online, even though they themselves post news and opinions on Facebook. Okay, let me read something that was written 200 years before the internet. Congress shall make no law restricting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for redress of grievances. U.S. Bill of Rights First Amendment. So we the parents come here today peaceably assembled to petition our local school board 
but apparently our local press prefers we sit down and shut up. They agree with Education Secretary Cardona that parents shouldn't really be the primary stakeholders in their children's schooling. They agree with the National School Board Association that local school board meetings need federal intervention. Do Bardstown School Board members believe this? Do you believe the Patriot Act should be used against parents demanding answers and accountability? Does this board agree with Secretary Cardona? Do you belong to the NSBA? Do taxpayer funds pay dues to the NSBA? As of October 17th, 18 state school board associations have written public letters denying their agreement with the NSBA request to the Attorney General. The Kentucky State School Board is one of these 18 states. The letter signed by Executive Director Carrie Schelling concludes, KSBA's leadership is currently evaluating the benefits of continued membership in the NSBA. We will continue to closely monitor the situation, watching for much needed corrective action from NSBA's leadership and a renewed commitment to transparency. We the parents expect each of you to do the same. If you don't believe parents are the primary stakeholders in their children's education, you don't belong on this board. Thank you. Uh, person number three is uh, Miss Judith Adams. Miss Adams, could you state your address, please? Uh, sure. Uh, it's 82 Bluegrass Drive, or Bluegrass Court. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to be here, and uh, uh, I'm coming mostly as a grandparent uh, and a great-grandparent, so I'm, I'm speaking from my heart. Uh, I have six great-grandchildren and nine grandchildren that uh, have been in the education system, and uh, the education system, from my point of view, has changed dramatically from the time when I was in school. And I'm not real happy with a lot of things that I see. Uh, I don't like it when I have a kindergartner tell me that boys are bad. You know, it's like, where are you getting that information? <coughs> I have a granddaughter that has determined that she is a native, uh, no. Uh, what, what's the correct woke terminology and she's one of the indigenous people and white people are bad uh, so uh, she is learning this in our schools uh, uh, the critical race theory upsets me tremendously and I understand that it is being infiltrated into our school system and uh, it's to me, it's a dividing teaching that uh, white people were, were the oppressors and the bad people. Uh, I have my grandchildren tell me that I know that I'm bad. Well, you know, my granddaughter is not bad for something somebody did 150 years ago. You know, we do not have a perfect history. We have done bad things. But as an American and as the people that I believe that we are, we're always looking to improve and challenge and do a better job. And being in divisive teaching is not what is going to pull us together. It's our similarities. You know, you put a bunch of little kids into a room, they don't go, oh, you're white and you're black and you're yellow and you've got a green shirt on, your eyes are purple. <coughs> you know, they don't divide. They play with each other. My daughter told me that she was working with some handicapped kids and she said the other kids on the playground, they never noticed they were handicapped. They just helped them to do whatever they needed to do because they weren't taught they were different or handicapped, you know. They included them because that's what we do when we're not taught that we're all different and some of us are bad because somebody did something 150 years ago that now we're supposed to pay a price for. So uh, we have 
given you guys some information. I know my daughter was here with the vaccine information that we have, that we have gotten, that, that we have gotten information that the masks are bad for our children, the vaccines. There's a lot of information out there that says that the vaccines are bad for our children. Uh, you know, we get called a conspiracy theorist. Well, you're not getting it on the news. It's not being published. You can't, unless you go into a back channel and look for information from somewhere else because anything else is being shut down. So where do you get your facts? Where do you find the doctors and the reports and the the statistics and the information that is out there that says this is not good for our children. You know, when we have a monument that is in Georgia that says this is the globalist agenda. We want to decrease the population to 500 million people. Well, is the vaccine part of that plan? Call me a conspiracy theorist. It's written in how many languages? Eight different languages that says this is what we want to do. That's not out what I want to do. I'm not a part of that plan. So thank you. Thank you. Next item is our next person is Mr. Charles Williams. I didn't realize I was signing up to speak, and I think Judith just said it all. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Well, once again, sometimes less is more, uh, especially from sitting in this seat uh, as far as comments, but uh, I just want to let you know how much we appreciate you guys taking part in the meeting and coming forth and, and you know, giving us your views, because that's important to us. It really, really is, and we want to encourage that. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Next item is uh, <coughs> number seven, presentation construction update for the new Bardstown Elementary School. Our architects, uh, Jeff Cash and Ken Stanfield, give her update. <coughs> where we're at so <laughs> they are knocking out the masonry it's coming along really well the brick is going up this is the view facing Templin Avenue um, and you can see the stone on the center element the lobby uh, front entrance it's really getting close to the top up there and it's coming along on the outside of the building as well it's Which really deceptive because if you drive by you'll still see a lot of the ICF the brick hasn't you know got up yet but if you go around and drive through what you'll see is the brick is almost 100 percent topped out mm -hmm. on the back side of the building so they're just they're actually there's a lot more progress and they're just making their way around to the front and i have a, a photo of exactly what he's talking about i didn't have these in the best of order so i apologize for the order so it might hop around a little but i was so excited by the stair that i put it <laughs> as the second one uh so this is the the cafeteria space looking over uh, facing Templin Avenue and this is our monumental stair that social you see stair. so it's social stair uh, and you can see that that's come into place and it's just really impactful in this space so that's exciting and this is the view Kenny was talking about with the brick going on up so as you can see uh, and it's got a little bit of the shadows working against me but the brick this is the view of the media center so you'll see the upstairs, those are the windows from the media center down on the first floor, that's the kitchen. And then to the left of the screen is a classroom wing. So that's continuing on and they're, they're doing really well at moving forward with the brick installation on, on around the building. This is just an example of what's going on the roof right now. So you can't get up there very well, but there's solar panels. Yay! <laughs> means power is coming into place. Uh, still have a ways to go, but the, the roofs are dried in and they're getting ready to start uh, putting copings on eventually. 
uh, and then they have the brick continuing to go up and we'll get our copings on after the bricks on there. I think last month we, we were talking a little bit about the critical path and getting the building dried in mm -hmm. and so that has occurred and what we're going to see is a lot more activity now. Uh, they'll be putting some uh, plastic over the window openings mm -hmm. um, while we wait for the windows to be delivered but that will allow them to really work a lot uh, more now in the dry inside the building. And actually, uh, windows are expected to arrive on site starting November 1st. So we'll see those start to begin installation when the weather permits. We'll see that really taking place. And that will really change the exterior of the building as that goes. Has there been an estimation on saving by using those solar panels? We, we did a, a payback schedule, uh, I think initially when it was an alternate, when we were looking at uh, the potential for it, and uh, it, was, it was less than six years, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, so before it starts. It, it, close to two. it may have been, it may have been. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to go back and look at that. It's a 30 kW system, so it's not going to uh, power the entire building, but it will power uh, part of the building. and just that with the energy savings that we're going to get from the reduced consumption that's where we're going to really see a huge difference i you know it's it's we're projecting right now but it, it wouldn't surprise me if this turns out to be at least in the top five energy efficient schools in the state uh, i'm still hoping for number one but you know we, we'll see but all the things that are in place to do that um I think we're I think we're going to be in really good shape, and just the idea is to save you all on operating cost, uh, so you can put that money back in the classroom. So I think we're going to be really really uh, amazed by how well it's going to perform. Okay. This is just an example of what's going on on the interior. So this is the view from the top of that stair that I showed you, facing the media center wall overlooking kind of the cafeteria and down below is the kitchen serving area and then uh, we have kind of a flexible learning lab to the bottom right so as you can see wood metal studs i said wood metal studs are going in and that will continue over the next couple of months we'll see drywall start to be installed on those and it will really take shape once you start getting the drywall on there it has a whole different feel for the space this is an example of what's taking place down the corridors at the classroom wings. So you have your block filler and then you have your priming. And sometimes you actually have your uh, almost the, the top coat of paint applied at these instances. So they're coming along and really getting the block finished out where they can and rolling from one wing to the next wing so that they can continue the process. So that was a buzz of activity when we were over there today. And one of the things that I'll, I'll just be brief, but um, it's exciting at this point to start seeing the level of detail because if you remember, we did a, a, a really, um, really neat interactive design process with your all's administrators, superintendents, staff, uh, teachers, and what's really exciting now is to see those things coming to life. Uh, because this was your all's vision and um, I think it's going to be an amazing school but seeing all that that was talked about as part of the vision in the beginning and now start to see it come to life is uh, is really going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. the, the comment I'll make to piggyback on that is um, and I you know if any board member wants to come and take a look or walk around just let me know but um, seeing like the uh, the instructional opportunities throughout the building um, Jennifer, you were pointing out a space in the cafeteria that's been designed purposefully and of course the social stairs is an instructional space um, and then those those bump outs in the hallways to see instructional spaces right in the middle of the hall essentially um, I mean it really is starting to take shape and it's really exciting to see. Yes, yeah, it's coming along very well. <clears throat> so that's the last bit of the photos so over the next month as I said we will continue to see Finishes being applied, we'll see windows arriving on site and being installed beginning in November. Um, and then everything, keep in mind, that, like is buttoning up on the exterior is going to be weather dependent. So it's going to be critical we go on and get those windows in place to really have the building acclimated to permit the finishes to really get to the next step 
so that we can have um, the flooring installed and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's coming along. It was very exciting. Any questions? No, oh, excellent. Thank okay. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Item 8 is the approval of the main campus renovation architectural services. So um, I'll, I'll comment. So, um, of course, Sherman Carter is the architect who worked with in our new elementary school. They were, um, they were requested at the board, uh, gosh, it's maybe been about a year ago, several months ago, mm -hmm. definitely, to start putting together a master plan for this mm -hmm. campus. Uh, they've done extraordinary work. Uh, we're, you know about the grant that we received last meeting. We're, we're in a position to start uh, actually taking action on renovation on this campus to include uh, that space in the old elementary. Um, but we need to formally uh, appoint and, and a architectural firm to serve as our architect. And without reservation, I uh, recommend to the board Sherman Carter Barnhart Architects for main campus renovations as well. And as I understand it through your notes, that uh, based on our requirements to put forth a open you know, advertisement, advertisement mm -hmm. and, and we only had one that actually... That's correct. Yeah, Sean okay. Carter was the one that, that sent their letter of intent as well. But, uh, but to me, also really important to say that I'm very pleased with that. Sure. All right. <coughs> so I need a motion for approval of the uh, main campus renovation architectural services. So I'll move. I have a motion. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> uh, item nine is approval of the main campus renovation construction management services. So um, much like uh, the process for advertising uh, for architectural services, we also uh, advertise for construction management. Um, we are using Codell Construction as our construction manager. Um, you know, they, they too have been wonderful to work with. Uh, they truly, from my view, are working for you uh, as a board, uh, making sure that, that uh, quality control and things are staying on schedule uh, as much as they have control over that. Um, I, we, we did advertise for construction management services. Codell was, was the only one that provided a letter of intent uh, but I'm so glad they did because I am also um, very, very pleased with Codell Construction. And I know they have a lot of experience in a renovation process too when it comes to moving kids around because we're still going to have school going on next year while we're do all this is happening. And their expertise uh, is really important as we shuffle and, and make progress and move people back. So um, again, with that reservation, I, will, uh, I would recommend to the board uh, Codell Construction be our construction management uh, firm. Okay, if there's no other discussion, I'm looking for a motion for approval of the construction management services. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Okay, item 10 is the presentation of the main campus master plan renovation update. Yeah, so um, Jennifer and Kenny coming back up to talk about, we've been, we've been talking a lot about renovations in the last, well, several two weeks now at least, uh, deep conversations. And thank you all very much for your confidence yes. in us. We greatly appreciate that and enjoy working with you all. Look forward to the <coughs> next project. So uh, with that, we wanted to just kind of overview what we had in your packets last time. Um, so what we're looking at, this is the <coughs> master plan thought process we've gone through uh, with Dr. Clark and various staff just to try to review opportunities with that. So what we have done here, just to kind of help orient you, the board office is down here at the bottom of the page. Existing high school is the yellow, um, green is the current elementary school that's occupied at the moment eventually you know those students will go out and then last is the middle school in orange so then something you might not recognize on here but allows opportunity for you all to kind of think on it is a potential future expansion at some point down the road for the gym to be replaced with a 3,000 seat capacity gym and that's something that we've discussed 
quite a bit with them. So this is a placeholder for that opportunity, but that's far down on the list of priorities at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to dive in to the first part of this, oh, which of course is the upper floor. I'll, I'll come back to the upper floor. Lower floor. This is the main floor where you walk into the building. And so what you're, to help orient you to where we're at, board office to the left of the screen, and then over here to the right, I don't know what's on the right, but we'll say the board office is on the left. Yeah. Yes. Parking lot. And middle school would be up here top mm -hmm. right, and then existing elementary top left. So what we were looking at is trying to see about unifying the overall campus in a way to number one, eliminate potentially the drive that currently comes here between the middle school, high school, and elementary school mm -hmm. campus and, and to really improve the safety on the overall campus. So we did an evaluation at the beginning and talked about, you know, is there a way to separate the property into two areas, bus versus parking. And that's still a continuing conversation that we're going to continue on with the district as we develop into the schematic design part. The next concept we talked about for the overall campus was, what if we looked at this as a campus and said, rather than just having the middle school by itself and just having the career tech by itself and the high school by itself, what if we took certain elements from those and, and said, can we share those elements and, and make a better use of those spaces? So some of that that we evaluated with that was such as the media center, and we talked about the cafeteria and said, if we can take the cafeteria away from at the middle school because it's already undersized, combine it with the high school and revamp this space to meet that capacity for both those buildings, then it might allow for a lot of opportunities for those areas, and that's something we've been reviewing as well. In the middle is where we talked about the potential for that media center, the media hub, and allows a collective space to be shared by all these buildings that are on this campus. And it would have flexible spaces downstairs, and I'm gonna go backwards for a minute. And it's at the top right of the screen up here, which would also allow for upstairs flexible spaces for group study areas, and various types of spaces that can meet the demands of all three of these facilities. The campus really can take on a, a different um, kind of uh, opportunities once the, the little kids leave. You know, once they go into their new building and this is just a 712 campus, um, there's a lot of things that you, that were prohibited, 612, I'm sorry, 612, that really would have been prohibitive you know with the elementary kids still on the campus and so that really was sort of the uh, I guess the catalyst of, of how can this campus be reimagined for students opportunities uh, and still maintain safety security but the idea that you could actually walk from one building to the next inside and not have to go out of outdoors mm -hmm. was also part of that process as well and so, like I said before, we had evaluated, you know, the media center concept. So what happens to those existing spaces that we've repurposed, right? So we're, we're talking about, for example, the high school media center, considering that to become science classroom spaces that you're already deficient on. Mm -hmm. So we go through and evaluate against the KDE model program for the various schools and say, as a campus view, what are the spaces that are needed to properly support this entire campus and that was part of the exercise that we worked through on this and that's just a few examples of some of what we did with that and then I'm going to proceed forward <coughs> as part of that process and in happily in in front of the Levitt Levitt yeah. I miss it every time <laughs> that yeah. uh, we were able to we had already started evaluating the existing elementary school building and said, okay, when it's exited out, how do we repurpose this building and make it into something that will really serve the community as well as the students? And so with that, we looked at the career tech facility and how could we really rework this space to work with that. Fortunately, we were ahead of the game when that application came out and it worked to our advantage, I think because we were more prepared than many districts were mm -hmm. 
because of just timing. It worked in our favor on this one. Yeah, I think I think Dr. Clark, he had um, a vision that was already in place. So a lot of other districts, the grant came out, and then they said, "Oh, what can we do?" Well, you all already had in place what you wanted to do. So it was just a matter of showing on the grant application. Here's our plan. Yeah, yeah. And so we were a step ahead on that. Didn't have a crystal ball. We were just lucky on that scenario. <laughs> uh, on the upstairs of the existing elementary school, it has opportunities with that as well. It can help fill needs for the middle school program as well as the high school pro program. So we're using that and repurposing a lot of those spaces to help fill what needs those facilities have as well. And then lastly, the middle school, we re-looked at it in ways that we could repurpose, again, the spaces that we talked about sharing, like the cafeteria we no longer show on here, but the media center, for example, since we're pulling that out, how do we repurpose that space in order to meet the needs for those programs? So that's part of what this exercise took us down, was you know, really trying to see if we look at this as a campus, what's the best way to serve the entire needs of the staff and the students for that campus. And that's just an overview of where, where we are. So just to, to add, and I mentioned this uh, when uh, Kenny and, and Jennifer were coming up, I mean, about every two weeks, we're sitting down and spending you know, hours talking about uh, where are we now. We have a meeting again today, we're, so this will happen uh, very regularly giving feedback because the the ultimate goal to to be able to and you all know this already but just to reiterate it the layback grant requires us to be uh, requesting or, or actually opening bids by September 1st of 22 um, and make sure I got that you're right and so that's very quick I mean in, in terms so we but again, we have done so much work up to this point, and even prior to that grant, we feel confident that we're gonna be in a good position to uh, not just open bids for that improved space, but also uh, potential renovations in the high school space as well. So, and really, a lot of work to do. Campus, it's a campus-wide yes. review. You know, if you're gonna touch all the buildings, why not make sure you have the, the flow of the site the way that it needs to be really meet the needs of everything. Yep. Great. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you. All right. That uh, moves us to item 11, the approval of the preschool partnership grant. Hi. Hey, How are you all? Hey. Yeah. Um, so as you may recall, in 2016, we applied for the preschool partnership grant at that time. Uh, it was offered through the Kentucky Department of Education in partnership with child care agencies um, and councils. And so we worked in the, through 2018, we had money. We got the first two rounds of money at that time. And we were able to partner with four different child care agencies, one of which was our in-house uh, on-campus BEEP program. Um, and then we worked with three other daycares as well. In addition, at that time, we had the STEAM Academy, which was over in the Tiger Den. Uh, that funding ended in 2018 but we were made aware at the end of this summer, right as school was starting, that um, they were handing over the reins for that to the Division of Child Care. And so we had about an eight to 10 day window to put together a grant proposal. Um, and Ms. Jenny Hagen that we spoke about earlier and I worked tirelessly on that over those eight to 10 days, um, right at the beginning of the school year. And we've recently found out that we have been awarded the grant. So I wanted to share with you today about the grant and um, ask for approval for that grant um, to be accepted. So a little bit about it, as I mentioned before, it is overseen by the Kentucky Division of Child Care. And the purpose of this grant is to provide quality full day um, experience for students, wherever that is. Their goal is to get kids off their couch and out of in front of televisions and electronics and in an environment where they are being engaged all day. Uh, the target audience for this is state funded students and so primarily we will be looking at our four year old students who qualify for free reduced lunches and four year olds with an IEP. If we have any additional space we will be targeting three year olds with an IEP. Um, but our goal is engagement and kindergarten readiness. 
So how much is this grant? Um, it is $375,000 over the next two and a half years. So it actually starts in January and will run five semesters. So I'll get $75,000 to work with uh, this beginning January to June. And then from there out, $150,000 per school year for the next two years. So in terms of what we're looking at and uh, how we need to spend this money, um, there will be quite a bit of professional training involved. And so at this time, our, we're budgeting $15,000 for that. Um, materials for both our facility and beef. So one thing I didn't mention, let me back up and say, and it may be actually in a later slide, is that when we really um, critiqued what we did last time, I'm gonna go back, um, we'll go back to that in just a minute. When we really critiqued what we did last time, we were getting the most bang for our buck at beef. What we realized after looking at this year's um, stats and last year's stats are where are our kids the rest of the day? 90% of our students, maybe even closer to 92% of our students that attend childcare go to the BEAT program on campus. And so instead of spreading ourselves too thin in four different locations, if 92% of our children are attending BEAT, that's, that's the partner we want to work with. And honestly, that's the one uh, that we felt most productive with the first time. Um, so we're excited to work again with Ms. Christie and Ms. Brenda and the preschool BEEP staff. So um, let's go back just a minute and look at budget again, but I wanted to tell you why BEEP was listed there. So materials for early childhood would be roughly $11,000. We would be able to spend $30,000 on materials at BEEP just to um, provide them with some more hands-on opportunities for their students for engagement. And the big bulk of money, and you just see dollar signs there because it's dependent on um, who we hire in those positions, will be spent on the adults that we put in this, these positions. So just like last time, we'll have one full-time teacher and one full-time assistant at early childhood to help us run our program. Um, and we'll be able to offer um, 40 students full day opportunity. And then another full-time teacher at BEEP to mentor, train, model, and work with them to make sure that the other half day for our students is engaging. So this runs through just a little bit of what I just said. The only thing I do wanna note is uh, it's difficult to start something like this mid-year um, and the grant money doesn't become available until January. I do have um, half classroom space, afternoon space. So for the second semester of this year, we'll be able to serve 20 students um, in our program and then the following two years uh, we'll be locating some space here on campus to be able to include 40 students um, and then also as I mentioned we will be um, partnering with BEEP and providing them a staff member as well so in terms of the timeline January 2022 we'll start a full-time program with 20 students um, and then in November of 2021, so two months prior, we'll go ahead and form our preschool partnership, partnership leadership team. That will consist of myself, um, of a special education teacher for my building, director of child care, assistant director of child care, and our newly hired ICE teacher. There are um, a couple of things that are the grant specified this time that weren't really specified last time. One, we really needed to hone in on social emotional learning of our students, which interestingly enough is something that we really worked on the last time we had this grant. So it was a little bit difficult to write that up because we are already in good space with that. Um, we worked really closely and what we're not able to cover during the school day with our second step program, BEEP follows the exact same um, calendar that we do. They know what we're doing and they pick up and they do the rest of the lessons with that. So that's been good and I feel like we're in a good place with that. The second thing was is that it's noted across the state that our daycares across the state are just really struggling with what to do with the special education population with kids who come with behavioral uh, issues with social delays and cognitive delays and what do we do with those. So that's one of the reasons that we have our special education teacher on this team is to really help us target that. And then also we'll be looking at early learning for reading and math through the grant as well. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Do you all have any questions? I think it's wonderful we get the money. That's great. Yeah, yes. super great. exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, Thanks for all your uh, work and uh, yeah. the, lead, the lead up to that. So. Yes. All right.
Thank you all so Thank much. You. Thank you. I need a motion for the approval of the preschool partnership grant. That's not too hard. <laughs> so moved. We have a motion. We have a second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Item 12 is the approval of the 2021-2022 notices of shortened school day last week. All right, Mr. Boston. All right. Hello, guys. And yes, how are you going? Um, coming to you today just to request the board's approval for five students to remain on a shortened school day. All five of these students have done so in the past. Um, and the way it operates with the, the Kentucky Department of Education is we are allowed to receive um, regular funding on these students even though they're on a part-time day um, with our Board of Education's approval. We don't seek KDE's approval, just your all's approval to um, allow them to do that. And then if approved, I'll upload their applications and their documents from their position to the Kentucky Department of Education and we would be good to go. Okay, so. Nothing new from the last time. So, how many did you say? Five students? Yes, five, sir. Five. Okay. So, we seek a motion for the approval of the notices of shortened school day week. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. Item 13 is the approval of the 2022 school bus purchase authorization. So, oh, guys. Our friend Kista. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. It is our friend. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that Miss Reed is not here. She's always the one who seems really excited about new buses for some reason. <laughs> and um, so that is what I'm coming to you for today. I just want you to know, as a district, um, we have a really good-looking uh, fleet of school buses. And I notice it here in town. I notice it when we take trips out of district. Sometimes that's not always the case. Um, We've been on a schedule, which was uh, was explained in your board notes, but a schedule of a, a two for one back and forth we in uh, year to year, just to keep that fleet not only looking good, but also in very good operational uh, care, so we do not have to spend a lot of extra money um, with mechanically and all of that. So um, what we are requesting uh, this time is the purchase of two uh, new school buses. Um, just to let you know, as, as part of this, there is also a Kentucky Division of Air Quality grant, uh, which is part of the uh, Kentucky Clean Diesel Fuel Program. As you know, last year we applied for a grant. It's much similar to that. Um, this is going to allow us the ability to apply for up to 25000 per unit. So for us, that could be up to $50,000 in savings. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time, but these buses qualify, the two that I'm bringing before you today. So we would have bus 10 and bus number 12, both of which are 2006 models, so you've gotten your money's worth out of those two buses. Um, they are starting to cost us a little bit of money to upkeep, so that's why we're bringing those two uh, for you to, uh, we will be getting rid of those two purchasing two new buses with uh, your approval today. Is it still uh, more cost efficient to turn them to scrap? We'll look at that. Uh, I look at that each time. But yes, as far as, as putting the bid out and running it in the paper and all that, you know, we get maybe a little bit more money, but not enough to. Uh, but we will be reaching out to uh, local churches things of that nature, and if they, if they want to purchase the bus for the amount that we could be getting, uh, we will allow them the ability to do that before we completely What's scrap. What's the ballpark number that the bus is worth? After, for scrap, yeah. Yeah, around anywhere between 1500 to 3000 Wow, okay. So it works really good for, for a lot of churches sure. with youth groups and things of that nature. And I, I mean, the, the buses are running, uh, they're just, you know, they, they're starting to deteriorate somewhat uh, for daily use, sure. but, um, so yeah, we'll definitely look at all options and we'll make the best choice that gives us the most uh, money. Okay. When were buses 10 and 12 purchased? Uh, 2006. All right, there's no further discussion. I'd like to seek a motion for approval of the school bus purchase authorization. So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Those buses come with drivers? 
<laughs> well, no, um, but we're working hard on drivers. I mean, yeah, I, I'm spending a lot of time beating the bushes and trying to get folks to, to come and drive. And again, this is not a Barstown City District problem. It's a nationwide problem, but we are, uh, I wish I could make that uh, happen, but we're, we're working hard to get drivers in place. Uh, As a side note, do, do we have hybrids? We, we it, that's an interesting point. We do have one hybrid that we purchased back, oh, probably about this same time, about 2008, something like that. And um, of course it had the, it had the batteries. Uh, that bus is currently in need of new batteries. And um, as I have, um, as I told you in the past, when we get to that point, we probably will not purchase the batteries and we will just make it a diesel bus. So it is currently in Louisville being transferred over as we speak. So the battery cost was 35,000 and new diesel engine was 25,000. So, you know, you know, we just, we didn't want to, you know, we wanted to take that savings and, um, but there's lots of things out there now about electric, propane, they propane. They propane to incentivize, incentivize us getting one of those. They're trying, they're trying to, but with the grants that we currently are putting in place, like last year's, uh, it's still more beneficial for us gotcha. uh, to go with with the regular diesel. What's the weight on a, on an average bus? Yeah, you got me there. I'll find out for you and let you know. I, I'm not sure on the exact weight. Um, Okay. 72, seven, anywhere 66 to 72 passengers, uh, but I'm not sure on the, the, on the exact weight, but I'll make a note of that. All right, thank you. So uh, I guess we need approval for the kiss to kiss. I'm patient. here for that on oh, that next okay. one. I'll just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yes, we have used Kista in the past. Uh, again, a little bit of information was in your, was in your board notes. Uh, KISTA is a program that allows us to finance the bus at a rate of 1.8%, which is great. Uh, so yes, I would just, we, we, those depreciate after about 10 years, uh, depreciate out. Um, I can't say anything negative about the KISTA bus program. So I would ask for your approval uh, today as well to use KISTA to finance the two buses in which you just approved. And on average, uh, just to uh, We've said this before, but it's about 1.5 buses per year. So last year during the shutdown, I don't remember having a. Uh, we got one bus last year. We, okay, so uh, next year we're not getting any. So we're, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I'm just saying it averages. And, and out I will not. Uh, that that just comes down to basically operational costs. Sure. And you know, Josh and I will work will work through that. But yes, it it would be our hope that we would not have to. So it averages out to about 1.5 per year. So mm -hmm. right. All right, thank you. I'm seeking a motion for approval of the KISTA participation resolution. I'll make a motion. We have a motion, ma'am, second. Second. We have two seconds, that's mm -hmm. good enough. <laughs> two for, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. 25,000 pounds. 25,000, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our friend Google. Yeah. <laughs> you the man. Item uh, 15 is approval of the leave of absence request. There's just one request for a leave of absence that we're seeking your approval for today. It's an FMLA leave. Are there any questions or comments? Seek a motion for that approval. We have a motion. May I have a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion carries. Item 16 is personnel, retirement, and resignations. So that information is in your board notes. Uh, we have one resignation and one retirement. Thank you. Item 17 is in your board packet, SBDM council minutes. I did note that perhaps we had duplication of the high school minutes for the July and August in the same packet. Was I think they had theirs because it's, I looked at that too, the date. I, I think they had theirs what, in the other month. Let me look at the format was a little different, so I thought maybe it, it was. It was because I looked at the dates of that as well. One was July and one was not, August, so I'm not sure if one got. I think they held their August one in July because then I looked at, at the end of the notes it said the next one was going to be in September. So that would have been right. their August. The For timing. some reason they must have held it. Right, the, the timing worked out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, that's noted and I need a motion for adjournment. One other thing, do we have a site anywhere that tells what is coming up like that? 
uh, play, a course recital. Um, it's Kelly. Kelly, are you okay. did you hear that question? Yes. So the high school puts everything like that on their calendar on our website, on their school website. So if you scroll down to the bottom, I can show you on the computer after this. That'd be fine. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Dr. Bachman, do you have anything remotely? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today, and I seek a motion for adjournment. Make a motion. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those folks, we are adjourned. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.